In this video I'm going to be creating a Galante Alpha clone in EFT so that I can see what some of the uh, ships would look like for that clone at max skills. I realize that EFT hasn't been updated since March and I'm really hoping it will be updated. <clears throat> if it's not then I'm just going to have to switch to PIFA because right now there are certain things that are updated in PIFA for new changes to the game that aren't updated in EFT so on certain ships you're going to see incorrect stats but for the ones we're looking at today for regular tech one frigates tech one destroyers it's not going to be a big impact so we're going to do this in EFT and we're going to create a, a Galante Alpha clone from the published list of skills so this is going to take a while I'm not going to make you watch it we're just going to cut right here and I'm going to go through I've already started you can see armor layering one EM compensation one let's do one more explosive armor compensation one hull upgrades one and then uh, kinetic one and mechanics three was it three? Oh, four. Okay, four. And then we get whole upgrades four. No, okay. Yeah, I'm going to double check this. All right, so I'm going to go through this very carefully and set it up exactly as this list over here shows. And then I'll restart the video when I'm done and so we can play around with some fits. All right, so I've created my Galante Alpha clone and I've put in all the uh, skills that are listed there on that dev blog and I went ahead and created a Tristan fit based off of my Tristan fit that I used on Abaddon and Kaloa. Now to make this work I had to downgrade several things. I had to drop the Tech 2 railguns to prototypes which isn't, a, isn't that big of a hit as far as the modules go there's no difference between a prototype and a tech 2 or very very little difference S the same damage except for the fact for tech 2 uh, you're able to get the bonus from the specialization skill so you can get an extra 10 percent damage out of tech 2's if you have level 5 railgun specialization but effectively that's not such a big downgrade because we're using faction ammo in this fit not tech 2 ammo whereas there's another fit I was looking at um, for my incursus where it used the null ammo as a default and since you can't use null with the tech 1 guns that fit was not possible with uh, an alpha clone so I had to downgrade the guns I had to downgrade the afterburner because the afterburner uh, the tech 2 you can't use with the, those skills I used integrated hobgoblins and warriors, but mostly the hobgoblins. Um, the warriors are just there as backups and in case I decide I need to have explosive damage for that target that's coming in, I can quickly just throw out those three and then two hobgoblins and have some more explosive damage at my disposal. So some of the stats here, before we look at what it looks like for the full fit with the better modules and the better skills is 3,200 hit points, it's pretty normal, um, 103 max tank with an overloaded AAR, always overload your AAR, 69 uh, maintained tank, but you don't have to worry about that because your capacitor is still above a minute, most of your fights aren't going to last more than a minute, um, I'd say at least half of them will be over in 30 seconds or less, and then the other half will be over in less than a minute. So that's not going to be such an issue, 103 is your tank, 133 with your guns overloaded is your uh, DPS output, your damage output. So that's the reason you overload the guns is because you only have two and whenever you have two especially it's even more important to overload all the time because that's a three minute overload time. Um, yeah, that's you're never going to burn out those guns in a fight. Never. So other than that there's no other changes. The big changes you see in DPS come from skill points. I've got implants in here, the exact same as I do on the other one. These are all cheap implants. Uh, you could f put all these implants into a clone for, I would say, less than 8 million isk. And the good thing about that is, if you're doing Faction Warfare PvP, which is what this ship's meant for, you should never lose your pod, ever. If you lose your pod in Faction Warfare PvP, 
you either had a lag spike, disconnected, or you got smart bombed warping to a gate, typically. But it's it's rare, so you can spend a little bit on implants, and you know that eight million isk investment, if you're gonna be flying this ship over and over, is gonna really pay off over 10, 20 ships. So, looking at this, and I checked, you can use all those implants with the skills, so they're still within the skills of the Galante Alpha Clone. The biggest problems I have with this, as it is, are sp are speed and DPS. So the speed. Let's have a look at my full fit. This is the fit that I use on a bad and Kaloa. And let me show Kaloa because he's not quite as high skilled as a bad um, He's pretty much, you know, this is about average of what you would expect from your average faction warfare PvP or would be around the level of Kaloa. And it's 970 meters per second compared to 860, so that's over 100 meters per second of speed difference plus a, almost a second of agility, um, a line time. What that means is that, that this, with the better skills and the better afterburner, um, Kaloa over here is going to be able to dictate range much better than the Galante Alpha clone. So this fight will happen wherever Kaloa, this ship, decides the fight will happen at 5K, 6K, 7K, 8K. It's going to happen wherever Kaloa says it's going to happen which can be exploited to some degree if you add this like in a one verse one which is you know chances of that actually happen these two fits actually fighting each other is pretty rare uh... it would be you know slightly in Kaloa's advantage to fight at a slightly further range but not really because his dps is higher so hundred seventy five dps compared to one thirty three that's considerably more plus he's got a little bit more hit points from his skills plus he's got a little bit better um, defense. And actually, let me, I think there might be, yeah, let's get rid of that. I had a the 5% repair drug, so that's, that's not fair. 110. So, with that, it's not a huge difference, but there's definitely a difference, and obviously there would be, but what I want you to take away from this is that you look at these two ships, and they're not massively different. They're not so different that it means that as a Galante Alpha clone free to play player you are not going to be able to PvP you are going to be able to PvP you are certainly going to be able to smash all the other free to play players if you're using good tactics like I talk about in my Tristan guide and I'm probably going to go ahead and throw this fit into my Tristan guide it's a free guide I have on my website that's got um, I don't know hours of footage to teach you how to fly the Tristan and so I'll probably add this plus an extra little video to that to show that it's completely possible. And I'm also going to, the moment they release this free-to-play expansion, I'm going to either, I'll probably create an account and start training, but that's going to take too long. So what I think I'll do is I'll take Kaloa and I will unsub his account for one month so that he drops down to a maxed out alpha clone. And then I'll take Kaloa and I'll go PvP in this ship and show that it's possible to get tons of kills. And I'm telling you that once free-to-play hits, all these new players that want to learn PvP, they're all going to Faction Warfare. All of them. A few will go out to Null Sex. Some will just do their high sex stuff and missions and mining. But the big surge in PvP is going to be Tech 1 Frigate PvP in Faction Warfare. So that's the place to be if you want to get some good fights on uh, release day. Is Well, not release day, but in the month after release day. So this is certainly viable. This fit right here is 100% viable. You will get kills in this because this fit doesn't rely on sheer power to win. This is a finesse fit. It's a fit that uses tactics. You're a scram kite, which means that if a ship comes in wanting to try to get right on top of you and do damage, you're going to be able to hold him out at 6 kilometers, 7 kilometers, 5 kilometers, whatever, to basically remove all his damage so he can't hit you and you're able to hit him. I think of, you know, the, the bully in the schoolyard with his hand on the kid's head and the hit kid throwing punches. That's kind of what the picture that jumps into my brain whenever I, I think of the scram kiting principle. It's you're holding them far enough away where they can't hit you but you can still hit them. So it's a good ship. Then I wanted to do one more just to kind of show you what this could do for cruisers. 
and I'm going to do a separate video about this to show something else cool that uh, someone in my comments mentioned that I thought was a cool idea and I don't know if it's actually going to work out but it was a really cool idea that I hadn't thought of um, I'll make sure to give him credit but the thorax is a ship that you can expect a lot of people probably want to fly as an alpha clone because if we know anything about EVE we know that new players want to fly the biggest ship they can possibly fly right that you know all of us have been through it we get in the ship in, in the game and we decide hey well this frigate's cool but man I want to fly a battleship I want to fly a super carrier or a titan right and you know these people have no idea that those ships are terrible and no one wants to fly them because they're only usable and they're not terrible but they're only usable in very very specific situations and so not battleships I'm talking about capitals um, whereas frigates cruisers battle cruisers and even battleships for some people um, are, are able to be used much much more the smaller the ship the more usable it is in general so for the thorax here we've got a whole tank setup you can use the Tech 2 uh, bulkheads, which I was actually shocked that you could. I didn't think you would be able to use those, but they don't require much skills. Look at that, only hole upgrades level 2. So you can use those. You could potentially drop that mag stab and get more tank from this ship, but I don't think it's worth it. You need some DPS. Your DPS output's a little bit weak as it is. The two webs are going to give you uh, plenty of range control, and since the thorax has a turret tracking speed bonus of 7.5 percent per level you're going to get uh, level four of that so you're level four galante cruiser so you get 20 percent bonus to your turret damage and a 30 percent bonus to your tracking with two webs you're going to smash frigates so i mean with the exception of atrons and threat and slashers you know the really small frigates those you might have a little bit of trouble with but i'm not 100 percent sure about that um, i don't have any implants in here so you could make it a little bit better with perhaps a 3% medium turret implant with um, the MC803. I'm actually going to go ahead and throw that in because I think that implant makes a really big difference for any kind of hull tanking ship. And it's like a million is, 2 million, 3 million. Um, but look at that. That's an extra 600 hit points. It's important. It makes a difference. All right. So you've got 22,000 hit points on the thorax. You've got 400 DPS output. You can overload, but because you have more guns, obviously you're not going to be able to overload for as long. Still, that's 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 still pretty good. A minute and a half on your lowest time um, at 438 DPS. 438 DPS is very reasonable. 22,000 hit point. That what this ship is going to be used for this fit, and what I would use this fit for. I just made it up on the fly. Um, I've never flown it. What I would use it for is to kill frigates. I'd go sit in a medium and wait for frigates, um, sit in a medium faction warfare site, or I would go sit on a bubble um, in Nullsec somewhere and wait for frigates and just blow them up. Um, and it would do very well. There's very few frigates that are going to be able to beat you if you were in this setup. Very few. Um, there are some, though. So this would be a great setup for the, the alpha clone so what I'm seeing is that these alpha clones are going to be usable in a free-to-play state now we don't know hundred percent for sure that this is exactly the skill CCP is going to use because we're still two months out from that patch from that expansion so there's very good chance almost a certainty that CCP will make some change to the details based on the discussion they get on the forums and um, the results they see on the test server. So which way is it likely to go? I think if anything the Alpha clone is likely to be given a little bit more skills let, rather than have them reduced from the point they're at right here. I think that it's in CCP's best interest to make this free to play as good as possible. They have to maintain their freemium uh, business model to the point to where to experience the real top end you're gonna have to either plex or pay the subscription um, however you want people to be able to enjoy the game and have a good time and really get a taste for what makes EVE Online such an awesome game you want them to be able to experience that 
with the free to play. And I think they can with these two fits. I think you can experience it. So I'm excited to see what happens and I'm hoping that CCP pursues ship skins a little bit more aggressively. I think that if they ever want to get this game to 100% free to play, which some people have told me is ridiculous and they'll never do that, I think it's the best thing they could ever do, 100% free to play, is because the more players you have in this game, the better the game is. Anyone who's been playing for a long time knows that. That the higher the player density in general, the better the game. So by going free to play, that would solve that problem. The way that they could still maintain their revenue is to build up in-game purchases, and they're not going to do it with monocles. They're not going to do it with um, Quaif T-shirts. They're not even going to do it with Quaif Thorax skins or Quaif, you know, Hyperions skins. Those are cool, and people will pay for those, 100%. People will pay for those cosmetic things, but people will pay way more for custom ship skins. So, <coughs> if there was a Pandemic Legion Alliance skin for all the ships that they used in their fleets, right? You had the Pandemic Legion carriers and uh, super carriers and Tengus and Proteuses and all that other stuff. Same thing with Goons, Brave. Um, all those different groups had their own custom skins that maybe you didn't even have to be part of the group to use. Maybe you were just a fan of PL and you wanted to use their skin. Or maybe you just thought that some group, you know, there was some group that called themselves the Tiger Squad and all their ships had Tiger Stripes on them. And you thought that looked cool. And so you could go to that alliance and you could buy those skins from them. And maybe these alliances would pay CCP for the, uh, the rights to be the sellers of these skins. I don't know. There's all kinds of different ways to go about it. But personally, I would be a hundred times more likely to buy an identity skin as opposed to just a good looking ship skin. So something, if I could buy one, you know, if I was in an alliance, um, I am an alliance, um, Escalating Entropy, and I could buy one of their skins that had a cool design and it was all set up and you know it can't be 100% custom because if everybody can make their own skins people are gonna make you know offensive crazy lewd skins so it have to be some limits and there'd have to be a CCP employee who took 10 seconds per skin and said yes or no um, it's okay it's not and then maybe some kind of petitionable process where you could report it if something was you know non-friendly to uh, to younger players so but if there was a alliance skin I could buy I would buy that I, I would you know give them my uh, my card right now and I would go buy that skin from all my favorite ships for the Tyrannus for the Pilgrim for the Brutix for all that stuff so I would go buy all that those skins that's where they're going to get their in-game purchases is from those not just vanity skins but identity skins People in those alliances are going to desperately want to have that identity and be able to fly around space with that skin showing that, hey, here's my custom skin. It's just, you know, it's like gang colors or something or, you know, sports team jerseys. That's where I think CCP should go and that's where I think their money is going to be. But that's just my opinion. Uh, this video ended like five minutes ago and I've just been talking. So... What I'm trying to say in this video is that the Alpha Clone is completely viable. If you have any ideas on what you would like to see me put this Galante Alpha Clone in or you want to see what it would do with your fit, go ahead and drop them in the comments. And if I get enough uh, comments with people saying, I'd like to see what a Galante Alpha Clone would do in an Atron or in my Atron fit or in an Algos or a Catalyst or whatever, Vexer, I'll go ahead and work that up for you and I'll make a new video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I've got a couple more videos that I've had ideas for. So we should have some videos coming out here in the next couple days with some cool stuff. So stick around for that. Mm -hmm.